all in one shot. That was a pretty sad uh, item. I hadn't realized how terrified a guy can get when I hear these shells dropping all around you. And you think every one is going to hit you right in the slit range. You've got to make sure your guns are okay. you got to make sure that everybody's awake to what's going on. So I, uh, I crossed some fields and ditches and uh, hugged uh, uh, hedgerows and had to crawl over one of our guys and a sniper had got him right through the forehead. That made me move a little faster. We were completely without a doctor or anything at that time. By nightfall on the 6th of June, as I've said, all the battalion objectives and all the division objectives, including Pegasus Bridge, the famous Pegasus Bridge, were sealed, were, uh, were, were captured and secured. By 8 o'clock on that particular night of June the 6th, when the casualty return from the battalion was sent into uh, brigade headquarters, which was a daily operation, there were 117 First Canadian Parachute Battalion soldiers listed as killed, wounded, and missing out of a jumping group of 547 individuals. So casualties were very high. Well, we secured all of the uh, small positions that we were secure. And never gave up any ground that they, they once had taken. We just sort of uh, dug in and consolidated ourselves along along the line along the, the flank until uh, until gradually the the people started to move in from the beaches. It was a success. Uh, we won the day, but it was a close run thing. One Canpara's bravery has been honored with a monument at Varaville, site of fierce fighting after the drop in Normandy. The 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion was the first Canadian unit on the ground in France. For that honor, though, they took heavy casualties, losing many of their officers. But non-commissioned officers stepped up, and under their leadership, the Canadians distinguished themselves under fire in a variety of combat situations. Between June 6th and September 6th, of 588 Canadians who jumped into battle, 83 were killed, 234 wounded, and 85 became prisoners of war. As one Canadian, Dan Hartigan, remembered, there was more adventure in one night than most men live in a lifetime. For six days and six nights, the enemy kept pressing on that ridge to try and break out, or to break through to get to the beach area. Only one tank was able to get through, and they didn't get through too very far uh, when they were taken out with a couple of our Piat gunners. At that same time, uh, the Germans were putting in a major attack um, on the eastern flank, and the German panzers and um, grenadiers had almost broken through the 6th Airborne uh, line. The 40 of us joined the Brits that were being overwhelmed and uh, the shells and uh, bullets were flying and some of the guys got knocked off almost immediately. We came to this field where um, all kinds of ammunition, uh, jeeps and Bren gun carriers were uh, blowing up and burning and bodies all over and we were told to dig in and be prepared for attack. And uh, we started to, but the ground was very hard and was very hard digging. Three Sherman tanks came up around. Damned if the, uh, the Germans didn't hit them. Well, bang, bang, bang. The, uh, the brigadier, he must have called in Navy artillery fire for support. And uh, they did such a good job, they uh, broke up the German attack. So we lost out of that 40, we lost about 20 of our men. And, uh, but the attack failed, so. At the end, uh, by nightfall, things had quietened down. Next morning, we returned back to our own line. On the second day, that was there D-Day plus two, I was a casualty. Took the first bullet that was fired at me. It was a sniper up in a, up in a tree, and uh, I had cleared the area out in front of me. And uh, 
I turned around to ask for more ammunition, and the enemy up in the tree delivered it. He shot, shot me with a, a rifle, and uh, he didn't kill me, thank goodness. But that was because my head was turned, and the bullet hit the back of my uh, neck and, uh, and skull. Well, I guess the, um, the second day, uh, that was the first bit of a battle, the Germans made an attack and uh, they started firing at us on when they were advancing and we opened up on them and <clears throat> then we realized that uh, they were just trying to find out where we were. We made a mistake. We should never have opened up on them. We should have laid quiet until they come right on us. The result was they now knew where we were so that's when the shelling started and they uh, shelled us every day. Most of the fighting that, uh, that I was involved in was um, the, there are no set-piece um, battles and, and such. The um, German army had moved out of the area to our front and had moved over to the Kahn area to reinforce, I guess it was the 12th SS and the 21st SS. We did move, I think, a little further uh, south because I can remember uh, uh, Ka the city of Khan was supposed to fall in, in something like 12 hours after, after they arrived at the beaches. Well, 30 days later, it still hadn't fallen. But it was some 10 days before one can para was taken out to rest on the, on the banks of the, uh, of the Khan Canal albeit under the, still under the guns of the 88 millimeters of the enemy. I can remember the night that uh, the attack started on Khan. We, we weren't involved in it. We were required to hold off any road transport that could get into Khan. Planes, uh, one after another, American and British uh, bombers went overhead. Because the Canadian forces, the ground forces, played a prominent role in that particular area with the 3rd Division and the 4th Armored Division. You could hear the rumble in the distance. We weren't very far from Khan. They did all that uh, operations of ru running into the Khan situation. But by that time, we had things pretty well settled down by 30 days, they started to break out of the beachhead and, and move inland, and, and, and gradually the war became much more fluid. We fought there until August um, the 17th, when there was a, a general breakout of all Allied troops. And uh, the battalion and the division advanced right up to the Seine River. Then went back to England for um retraining and preparation for another operation. I didn't last till the right to the end. I got hit by a sniper on August the 7th, and I was flown back to England um, into the hospital. I was there about a month, and that's when, um, in September, when the battalion got back to England, I heard about it, and the uh, doctor allowed me to go right back to the battalion. We quickly came up to strength. Uh, by taking men on from reinforcement, indoctrinating them, training them, so that by the 1st of December, we were right up to snuff. We were right up to measure. First Canadian Parachute Battalion, once they returned from Normandy, uh, were those that were left. There was 187 men I was able to bring out of there, out of the original 547. Uh, went on leave. We had an extended leave of about 10 days. So everybody was on leave. I was in a theater with a couple of other fellows and in the middle England, and a notice came on the screen, all paras return immediately to barracks. In any case, Market Garden uh, was Field Marshal Montgomery's uh, plan to, to get into the heart of Germany very early and force a, an end of the war. And by the time they got to Arnhem, of course, the Germans were ready for them. Of course, it, part of it was a failure. Part of it was uh, successful. We'd heard about the, uh, the attack at Arnhem, 
and we thought we were going in 